Morning Stars and Strikes is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Welcome back to Park Place Lanes, everyone. This is week two of our Mixed Scotch Doubles Tournament, our annual event here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. Glad you could join us. And uh, Carol Downey and Kevin Davis will be going for win number two in a row. And uh, they pulled terrific last week, if you missed it, 4-10 in a mixed doubles, Scotch Doubles format. Great score. All right, let's meet our bowlers. Uh, we'll tell you a little bit about the bonus ball contest a little bit at the end of the show because that's going to be important uh, as well. But first of all, returning, looking for their second win in a row from Manchester, New Hampshire, Kevin Davis and his partner, Carol Downey from Andover, Mass. Yes, Kevin comes in averaging 127 and his roll-off score 676. Carol Downey 118 and her roll-off score 571. And again, they came in as the number four seeded team. And again, if you're not sure how exactly we arrive at these teams and the seedings, we'll explain that a little bit later on. And also, our third seeded team coming in this week to challenge the team of Davis and Downey, Steve Vadney from Claremont, New Hampshire, and his partner, Penny Brady from Manchester. Yes, and Penny comes in averaging 109, and her roll-off score 599. Steve Vadney, a 125 average, and his roll-off score 655. All right, now the bonus ball contest at the end of this week's show. We'll have $100 on the line. We hope we have your uh, postcards in the big TV over here to our left, and if not, we will tell you how you can do that a little bit later on in the program. We have three strings of bowling coming up. We'll start it off. Our mixed doubles competition continues right after this. Adney and Penny Brady next week standing by as the competition. The team of Jack Ray and Joanne Vandiver. And in two weeks, we'll have our series doubles championship match with Roland Hood and Vi Byron standing by as the number one seeds ready and waiting. Kevin Davis now to start this match off on lane 32. Kevin uh, celebrated his first appearance on our show last week with a fine effort. Ten marks in 16 frames. A bit of a slow start, but he really heated up at the end. One and nine left for... Kevin. And a 10 box. This time, just the three pin. Watch out. Oh, my. Now the two eight. Kind of scary knowing you hit one ball left. <laughs> Still looking at seven pins. Plus in this configuration, and it's a six box for... Kevin Davis. So Steve Vadney will step up against two open frames. And here's a man that, as much as anyone, has owned this show over the almost six years now that we've been doing it. 21 wins, six losses. Five of those wins came in mixed doubles. Spoke last week of Steve's pairing with Jackie Sterner, which occurred back in April and May of 1987. We've talked about how rare it is for a team at the seated at the bottom of the ladder from one series to another to string all those wins together and win the whole thing. Well, as hard as it is in singles, it's even harder in doubles. And Steve Vadney and Jack, uh, uh, Steve Vadney and Jackie Sterner put five consecutive wins together back in the spring of '87 in doubles competition to. Uh, take the championship and ironically of the five wins really only one of them was close and that was the championship match which they won by two the uh, highest score they had in those five weeks was 424 that's the highest doubles triple we've had here on the program so we're all tied up for a virtue of a nine and a seven by Steve Vatney so we could have phoned those to four boxes in. We wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Carol Downey.
Carol waiting for the wood to settle down. Last week, Carol had six marks, four spares, and a couple of strikes. Let's see. Yes. Nice, nice 10. Take a look at that. Ball caps the top of that pin and around the seven pin, but the wood does all the damage. Right flush on the head pin. Three, well, six, four, seven. Looks like it might have slipped out of Carroll's hand a bit. The team of Davis and Downey had a fine third string last week, 159. They had eight marks in the string, including six in a row to close it out. Still looking for our first mark of the match. And now Penny Brady. Penny's been with us before in doubles competition. Record of 0-1. Actually, I take it back. Penny's appearance was in singles. 5-7-10. Let's take a look. Well, we're going to go after the five pin in the wood. She's going to need some help after that. Had the right idea, but a little too fine on the wood. The winning team on this show will move on and face our number two seated team of Jack Ray and Joanne Vandiver next week. The runners up will split $175 and also each receive a runner up trophy, runner up plaque from the NNR Trophy Company of Winchenden. And still looking for our first mark. Four horsemen this time. One, three, six, ten on the right. A little different than last week's match. Last week we opened up with marks right away. And Penny lost that one to the left. what you wanted to do. Nice 10 by Penny. And a one pin lead for the team after four. Uh, make it dead even after four. Boy, when you lose track of the score and there haven't even been any marks yet, you know, it could be a long day. <laughs> Route continues. After our mixed doubles tournament is over, two weeks from today, we will of course be moving back into our regular tournament of champions sequence as we move into the second half of the season. We have three Tournament of Champions qualifiers already in the men's division. Watch out, leaving the five pin. Al Cloutier, Paul Berger, and Scott Williams have already qualified, and we'll have three more qualifiers from the second half of the year. And then, of course, in the spring, we'll have our second annual Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. Steve Vadney. Well, there's only uh, one way to get these bowlers on the stick, and that's to say that usually the mixed doubles format <laughs> is a low-scoring affair. <laughs> that worked last week. <laughs> it's too bad that we don't award frequent driver miles for Steve Vadner for coming down here because he makes a long trip every time he visits us from Claremont. But he's made it worth his while over the years. right through the middle. Interesting leave. Two, four, five, seven on the left. Piece of wood in front of those four pins, and then he still has to negotiate the six, ten on the right. And then there were six boxes gone. Still no marks. 
dead even right now with the ball to come. Steve will take one and get a one-pin lead for his team. One-pin lead looks like a big lead right now. <laughs> get him going. Dottie's starting to fall asleep there on the scoreboard. No, oh, and Carol Downey joins right the party, the punching right through the center. Looks like whatever it is, everyone's caught it. Oh, excellent try. Split the three and the six, and the three one right between the two and the four. Cleared out the four seven, two eights left. And she'll make it a nine box. Four horsemen right side now for Carol Downey. Played on the outside, not quite far outside enough. Removes just the head pin. The crowd is starting to get anxious now. <laughs> there will be a round of applause when the first mark goes up on the, oh, it'll be on the scoreboard. Terribly sarcastic, too, <laughs> you can be sure. These bowling fans are very demanding. Well, you know, all those predictions come out for the new year. It was a prediction that the bowling scores would be lower in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> Six ten on the right with the seven. And a great nine. <laughs> Still a one pin advantage for the team of Steve Vadney and Penny Brady. And a half Worcester. Well, we're getting a full assortment here of the... Uh, we gotta change the name of the show to make that spare. <laughs> We can joke about it. The bowlers don't think it's funny at all. And I've been through a few matches like that when it, you know, the longer you go without getting one, boy, it's tough. Challenging game anyways. Without having these millions and millions of people watching on television at home saying, I can do that. Kevin Davis now for the final two in game one. And there's a solid hit. Let's see, the five and the eight. In fact, that's the biggest drop in the first ball we've had in a, in yeah. a while. No, right on it. Hey. <laughs> Did they mean it? That's what I want to know. Wild roar from the crowd here. <laughs> Short-lived. Disappointing four fill was on the object pin, the head pin, but drove well, it right straight back. It would figure after what happened <laughs> that it would finally get a mark and the disappointing fill. Let's see. Ooh, that looked like it might have been better. Well, it'll be a low score for the team of Davis and Downey, a 92, but that may be enough to take the lead after one, depending on what Steve Downey does here. Steve Downey, Steve Vadney. It's catching. Too many names. <laughs> There's a big hit. Yeah. And I'll tell you, that nine pin wanted to stay up. It almost didn't go over. Pushes the nine pin right back, right there. Finally pushes it off the plate. Their first mark matches the mark up in the ninth, but theirs is a strike. <laughs> leaving the three and the seven, but a spare leave that wood is angled right at the 10 pin. Should the front piece of wood should not, as long as he's right at the three pin, should not hurt the shot at all. Should drive it right straight back. Oops, a little, a little farther right than I think Steve wanted, but spare on strike. And there you see the replay, and this is the only time that the bowler will fill his own mark or her own mark in this 10th frame. 
other than the second frame they're bowling, of course. The team of Badney and Brady will have a 15-pin lead at the end of one as the marks come on the board toward the end of that first game. Vadney and Brady lead 107 to 92. We'll be back with more right after these words. We're ready to start the middle game with the team of Vadney and Brady leading by 15. Right on the head pin, and a good kick out. And now a spare leave, although it won't be as easy as it looked at first. Right, so the four pin topple over on her. She looked like she was gonna have the two, four, seven. We made in, inside or outside of the two pin. Either the ball's gotta deflect off and grab the seven or the two pin itself. Got a chance. Yes. yes, great shot. First mark for Penny Brady. Just nudges the two pin, comes off the wall and into the seven. Oh, disappointing two. They're now trying to work it out. The eight box, but the mark, the effect of the mark is nullified. And now Carol Downey, who's looking for her first mark. Oh, well, we've got three of the four bowlers with marks now. Let's see if Carol can complete the sweep here. Good and first ball. Wants the seven or the ten to go and push the ten pin. Plenty of wood though. All kinds of things could happen with this wood here. Needs to get out her slide ruler on this one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like maybe on or near the red line on that leftmost piece of wood. Might do it. Well, I think you were probably right, Doug. She came up a little higher than she wanted to, and the ball deflected around the seven. But she was close to a mark. Well, of course, they were not, they're not going to lose much ground because the because of the low fill. One, three, six, seven, eight for Carol on lane 31. Carol's probably thinking, sure, now the 10 pin kicks out. <laughs> Carol is from Andover, Massachusetts. Does a lot of her bowling right here at Park Place Lane. She has three children, Cheryl, JJ, and Noel, and a two-year-old grandson, Jamie. Steve Vadney up in lane 32. Right in the oh, pocket. No thought about that one. That one went quickly. Very quickly. One three pocket. And crunch. Looking for a double. Right. Little oh high. my. What an ugly leave. The four, nine, and ten. Let's see what the wood does, but I don't know if it's going to be much of a factor. The only chance he may have, though, is to try and get that wood in motion. Well, there goes that thought. <laughs> He's going to actually try to cut the four pin on a left-hand side. It'll be a great shot if it happens. Oh, Oof. not by much. Great effort by Steve Vadna. Eight on the strike. The break I gave the bowl is a little pep talk, so. Look at this, oh. 10 into the nine, wow. <laughs> oh, if that had been for a spare, that really would have been something, but it's Let's still a see. great shot. I've never seen that done before. <laughs> 10 into the nine. Yeah, I gave him a little break, uh, on the break, I gave him a little pep talk, and it's obvious that Steve listened to me. Mm. <laughs> Five, eight, nine, 10. Good ball by Kevin. 
Davis, but not much to show for it. Now, we talked last week, and we've mentioned this several times over the course of the show, that throwing a hard ball doesn't necessarily mean you'll get a lot of action. In fact, sometimes it can take it away because the ball is on the lane for a shorter period of time. And the pins react so, uh, so much off that hard ball, they actually pick up and go over the top. And you'll leave a lot in the back row. Much to that uh, last leave that Kevin Davis left, the 5, 8, 9, 10. And a mark by Kevin. And we will pause right here as the team of Davis and Downey trying to get back into this thing. They trailed by 15 coming in. We're about halfway through. And we'll be back with more on Stars and Strikes after this. Penny Brady. This is game two, if you're just tuning in. Week number two of our mixed scotch doubles format here on Stars oh, and Strikes. Strike, and it's a big strike. strike. Speaking of strikes, that's the third one for the team. Got a little smile out of Penny that time. <laughs> All business up there. Looking for two back on the head pin. Ooh. No, Two, we'll four, see. seven, in the eight, uh, nine, and ten. But what's more important is he's got a piece of wood in behind the two and the four that looks like it's got a nice angle to possibly clear out the nine, ten. But missed the object being the two pin. Seven fill on the strike. Well, maybe it wasn't there anyway. Nine box for Penny. But she throws 26 pins up there, and of course, Steve Vadney and Penny Brady already have the lead. Carol Downey with the fill on a spare left by her partner. Oh, boy. And she's got a nine drop. Got a nice break when that four pin kicked out of there, but also took down the six. Gives a nine and a spare, shooting at the three pin for another mark. problem. Two in a row. That's Carol's first mark. Another pretty good first ball, although a little thin. A five, seven, and ten, and this could get interesting, too. This wood rolling around. Changing by the minute. Well, I think she, that front piece of wood, if she goes on the left-hand tip of it, could ball could deflect into the seven, the wood take the rest. Let's see, yes, sir. It is. Three in a row for the team of Davis and Downey. Here's the replay, watch the ball. Right into the seven pin, the wood takes the five and the 10. And as Doug mentioned, three marks in a row, as you see there in the scoreboard. The scoreboard being kept by Dottie Larrick. Steve Vadney is right in the Brooklyn pocket. He kicks out the five pin, but now he's left with the nine and 10. Well, he made it with no wood earlier, so this should That's be right. a piece should of cake. <laughs> he's got to play the nine pin and the wood at the same time. Right there. Yes. See, no problem. <laughs> Very well done. Every other box, that lane 32 has been very good to them. Spare, strike, strike, spare. They mastered lane 31. Be all set. Well, 6-10 on the right with the seven. This leave up many times. In fact, we saw a lot of these types of leagues that league leaves that first game. Will it snap? No. That was. An important mark, though, for Steve Vadney to get up on the board, however, because Davis and Downey appear to be putting it together a little bit. They're working on their third consecutive mark and will most likely be cutting into the lead. But, of course, Kevin Davis will be opposite. That spare by Steve Vadney in the seventh. Good-looking ball going in, and he catches them all this time. Almost had the 8-9 left. Watch the 8 and the 9 pins for the last two to kick out right there. First strike for the team, and just a little short of the pocket that time. 
coming Hang down. On. Wow. As long as you keep the pins in play here, you can score. You get away with a break off the head pin once in a while, and leaves on the one and the nine. Well, this time it misses the object pin. Well, this thing is just about even right now. Kevin Davis will leave the head pin, and the lead for Vadney and Brady is now six. Six pin lead in the match. Penny Brady now to finish game two. Come on, come on. Well, she got one extra to kick out, but leaves that six pin up there. Let's see if the wood will. No, I thought it might catch that six pin. And of course now it turns away from it. And their only hope is to go after the four and seven. Preferably as low as you can get on that wood to snap it. She almost has to go right at the seven pin. Yep. Well, after a bit of a slow start, both teams, though, appear to be putting it together here in this middle game. There's too much talent in the four bowlers to continue like that first game went. Actually, they weren't bowling that badly. Yeah, they were. <laughs> they didn't bowl very good that first game. <laughs> but they've turned it around this second game. The difference of hitting that head pin with the first ball as opposed to not hitting it. And that's what happened the first game. This game, both teams more consistently on the head pin with the first ball. And that's the only way you score in this game. That was a nice 10 by Petty, Penny Brady. 121 for the team. Carol Downey is left with the five and the seven. And we'll see what the wood will do. Well, it looks like it's a nice angle for the ball to carry him off into the seven. Maybe a little low. Oh, enough, enough to catch the seven. One twenty through nine with a ball to come. Each team with six marks now. And that seven fill gives Davis and Downey the lead by one in the match. But now they trail by one. Still a solid string, though, for Davis and Downey, and the totals will go up on the board. 228 for Vadney and Brady, 227 for Davis and Downey. One string will decide it, and we'll be back on Stars and Strikes in a minute. You win some cash. If not, you win a TV50 NHCBA desk pen. All right, Kevin Davis is ready to go. Lane 32 will be the place, and just one pin separates these two teams. Vadney and Brady in the lead. Wow. How would you like to be one of, one of those pins standing up down there with him throwing at you? When you throw as hard as Kevin does and you only chop out two or three pins, it sounds like you're breaking them. <laughs> Nine to start. We'd love to have, to have you join us here at Park Place Lanes in person for a taping of Camelpin Stars and Strikes as Kevin Davis puts a strike up in the second, taking out his vengeance for that first box. Ooh. And we will be taping again here on Stars and Strikes next Sunday, January the 14th. And we'd love to see you. We start around 9.30 or 10 in the morning and go all day till 4, 4.30 in the afternoon. So if you're in the neighborhood, we'd love to have, have you stop by and say hello. We're at Park Place Lanes. Very easy to find on Route 111, just up from the junction of Route 28. I should say uh, on Route 28, just up from the junction <laughs> of Route 111. Where are we anyway? Uh, right here in Wyndham, New Hampshire. Very easy to find off 
Exit three from Route 93. Take uh, Route 111 east, and then a left on 28, and just up on the right-hand side. So you get confused because you don't often know where your Learjet lands when they get yeah, you here. Yeah, that's true. So it's tough to figure that's exactly right, yeah. where. You just walk on the plane and walk off. And Steve Vadney, second frame, final game, leading by a mere pin. And wants that seven pin to go. <laughs> but instead, the six pin goes. So that leaves him with the three and the seven. Way out in front of the seven. So he's going to shoot at the three, hopefully a little bit to the right side of it, like that. Oh! No problem. <laughs> well, once you shoot the 9-10 without wood, anything That's else looks right. easy. Just clips the three pin and off the, almost went around that seven pin. <laughs> that would have been a shame. Put a star next to that one. Harold Downey working on a strike put up by her partner Kevin Davis in the second. Three, five, and the sleeper in the back, the nine pin. Almost have to be flush on the three pin to carry the nine. But sometimes you're so flush to get the nine, you miss the five. Marks are all even, seven for each team. And the match is just about dead even as well. Davis and Downey have two strikes, Vadney and Brady with three. That's about the only difference right now. Let's see. Yes, oh, Very what a well shot done. that is. Very well done. That's a terrific shot, not an easy spare. Actually pushed the three into the five and then finally the nine. Carroll right back on the head pin, but right through the middle. Boy, so frustrating. You make a great shot for a spare. Fill it with a spread eagle and now a five box. And she really pushed that last ball. And didn't release that in the same smoothness that she usually has. So that spare really uh, counted as, as 19 pins total. So really didn't help him that much. Seven pin on the fill for Penny Brady. The one, three, and six. Yes, and for the, the spare. Wall. Two in a row. And grabbing the lead back, or possibility of grabbing the lead back because of the four on the spare and the five box by Carol Downey. Pretty good pocket hit. Triangle leave for Penny Brady. Well, she showed us the three-pin spare a moment ago. Let's see if she can turn another one. This one could be a little help with the wood in between, too. Mm. And still was too light on the two-pin. But puts her team back in the lead again. Nope. We're going to roll away for a quick break. We'll look at the scoreboard, and it's still very close. The team of Vadney and Brady has increased the lead. It's now seven with six boxes to go, and we'll be back to decide a winner here in a minute. Six boxes to go. Close match. Week two of our mixed scotch doubles tournament. Big hit, and oh, the ooh. ten pin will stay there. Move the ten pin off the spot a little, but it still stands. Piece of wood directly in front of it and leaning against it. The fifth mark of the day for Kevin Davis. Ooh, way right for three. That's what you definitely don't want to do here is miss it far, that far to the right by not even clipping the three pin because when that happens, at least you get the quarter break. Well, again, second straight time that the team of Davis and Downey will have a mark, but not much to show for it in the long run. Just 24 pins in those two, 23 pins in those two boxes. And remember, the team of Vadney and Brady with a seven pin lead. So anything Steve can put up there above 23 will increase that margin. Right in the pocket. Look out. Wow. 
Steve Vadney chant. <laughs> Maybe the Mort Downey show had started I taping think that's again. The, the Claremont call. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for a double and wants the four pin to go, but three six and the four. Deserved better, really. Boy, there's always the threat when Steve is up there that he's going to make uh, those he's, shots. He's exceptionally sharp today, obviously, and he's. A lot of extra body angles, and usually that indicates that the bowler is on top of his game, and he thinks he can make every shot up there, and he's coming close to that and each and every time he shoots at the pins. Well, it's getting a little bit more urgent now for Davis and Downey. They lead by, or they trail by 13 in the match with four to go, and Carol Downey answers the challenge. Well, it's all said and done. They're going to go back and look at the third, fourth, and fifth frames of this game. Carroll filled his strike, but the third box, uh, they had a mark with four and a five frame, and then a mark with three. So those three boxes, if they could have back, certainly would like that. Two, four, five triangle left for Carroll, trying to make spare on strike. Tough shot in the pressure situation. Got to hurry. No, not quite. All right, 27 in those two boxes. Badney and Brady will have the lead going into the final two. The question is, by how much? If there's any advantage to it at all, Steve Vadney will be the one who throws the final two frames. Let's see if Penny Brady can make a shot here. No, not quite. All right, through the seventh, the lead is four. One coming in, three here in the third game. So four pins total for Vadney and Brady. Penny would like nothing better to put a mark up for Steve to work on. Oh, boy. Well, let's see what that... Well, not quite swung around enough, but going to have to try to pinch the five pin on the side of where the wood is, and maybe the wood would come off the wall, too. So she have two chances at it. Nope. Neither worked. She can game one and count, though by knocking the 10 pin down. She does, increasing the lead to five. And for Penny Brady, the day is complete with two spares and a strike. Carol Downey, by the way, finished with four spares and a strike. It's all down to the men. Final two for Kevin Davis and really needs to put at least one mark up. No, oh, off target. Boy, now there's something you don't see very often. <laughs> the three and five pin went out. These are the types of matches that either make you a TV bowler or <laughs> make you frightened of them. <laughs> when you're up there and the world's on your shoulders, you need a mark. Give yourself a chance to win the match. It's going to go down to the last frame. I wouldn't want to let Steve Vadney have a four or five pin lead going into the final two without having at least one mark up there. Kevin has... That's a good ball. <laughs> no doubt about that one. Well, of course, now there's the element of a double, which could really make things interesting. Let's see what Kevin comes up with here. That's his third strike of the day. He had three last week. Well, anything over five, they'll force Steve to get at least one mark. Oh, watch out! Oh, wow! And I'll tell you, that changed the complexion of the match in a hurry. Just what you talked about, Doug. It looked like he was going to left with this five, the seven, and the eight. The five, the eight go, and then finally the seven for a double strike. Oh, this ball still is very critical. Right in the pocket again. 29 pins, the final frame. Big hand for Kevin Davis. And now Steve Vadney needs two marks. 
All of a sudden, what looked like it might have been a workable situation. Now Steve Vadney needs two marks. He's got to get 135 to tie. 136 will win it. Right now he's operating on a 122 clip. So as Doug said, needs two marks. Off target there, but watch out. A makeable leave. One, three, and five. Piece of wood in behind the one and the three. Making it a much easier shot. If he's on target. Uh, he, he is. is. There's one. What a match. Seventh mark of the day for Steve Vadney. Uh, Phil is, of course, important here. Can't afford a low fill. And what's going to happen? Oh, my. He might have been better off with that four pin up there. Let's see. Remember, he must mark. Well, he's got two choices. Play the V where the wood come together yeah, or play the left wood. I think he's got to play the left wood because I don't think he has the angle in the back. Oh, yeah. and that is it. Kevin Davis and Carol Downey will move on. They have won two in a row. And what a match that was. And absolutely. Five pin victory, I believe. 358 for Vadney and Brady. 363 for Davis and Downey. We'll be back to talk to the bowlers and go for $100 in the bonus ball contest right after this. Welcome back to Park Place Lanes, everybody, and quickly a chance to uh, present some checks and talk to the bowlers. Penny Brady, a check for you. Steve Vadney, a check for you, the $175 runner-up prize. And, uh, Penny, you've been here twice, and this time in doubles and before in singles, both times, I guess you could say you've had the misfortune of being Carol, paired yeah. against Carol Downey. Yeah, she's a good bowler, and I just didn't help enough today. Well, it was uh, still a great match, uh, right down to the final boxes. Uh, the thing changed there right at the end, Steve, for you. It looked like maybe you'd only have to throw uh, maybe no marks or at most one, and then it changed right at the end. Well, they, like you, they say, Yogi Bear says, it ain't over till it's over. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it went. <laughs> well, we appreciate you both being here. Uh, of course, Steve, we'll be seeing you again, I have a feeling, before too long. And, Penny, we hope to see you again real soon as Thank well. Uh, congratulations. All right, that's Steve Vadney and Penny Brady. They are runner-ups for this show. And now we'll send it over to Kevin Davis on lane 31. We'll try and get a $100 match in our bonus ball contest. And let's see, it's a nine this time. All right, let's, Dan feels confident as he reaches into the TV. Carol and Kevin, come on over. Oh, it's a whale-watching postcard. But it's not a match for Arthur. I'll never get this one on the first try. Potolatus or Potolates? From Summersworth, New Hampshire, Arthur will be sending you a TV50 NHCBA desk pen as a uh, consolation prize. We'll have $110 next week, and congratulations again, you two. Uh, you left it to the end that time. That was, uh, that was exciting. Again, a good partner. <laughs> <laughs> And that, had, were you aware uh, before that, that uh, before the show, that this was the second time you'd bowled against Penny on the show? No, I wasn't. Uh, no. The other time she was here was in singles competition. Uh, this time you did do it to her in doubles. And uh, Kevin, what were you thinking going into that last box? You knew you had to have something. And you